Hi, I'm Michael Lim, and I'm the chair of neurosurgery at Stanford. You are listening to Interview with a Surgeon with the Surgeon Agent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Interview with the Surgeon. Today, we welcome Dr. Michael Lim, chair of neurosurgery at Stanford. Doc, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. How about yourself? I'm doing good. So let's just jump right into it. What were your goals and aspirations during your residency? You know, I think when you enter residency, especially in neurosurgery, I mean, you've chosen a surgical field. So first and foremost, I think you want to make sure that you are going to get good surgical training because you want to be a surgeon and, you know, society is investing into you. And I think it's our duty to, to take that responsibility seriously and, and uh, take it upon ourselves to um, be the best possible surgeons we can. Number two, I think in, in terms of where we are in technology and what we are in knowledge in, in medicine, um, I think that we also want to be uh, in a position to also contribute um, and um, think about doing research. And it's not always about basic science. There's clinical research. There's, you know, um, there's devices. There's lots of things you can contribute to, but I think that you want to make some sort of intellectual contribution. Um, and lastly, um, you know, I think uh, you think about education and, um, you know, going into residency, you want to be in a place that, um, you know, um, the, your mentors and, and teachers are, uh, care about your growth and well-being, um, not just as a surgeon, but academically and, and personally. Um, and you are also expected to be a leader and they should give you those skills or instill in, in you at least leadership skills by the time you leave so that you can mentor and, and train the next generation. So can you kind of take us through your mentality heading into your chief year and what the job search process was like and how that perspective changed in the beginning years of your career? Yeah, so I think when you enter into your chief year, um, you know, it's, it's probably one of the best years of your residency. Um, you get to see so many cases, you get to choose the cases you want to go to and you get to go to the, 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 you know, the most complex and biggest cases, usually, you know, in a field that you're specializing in. And by chief year, you kind of know what you want to do, you know, whether it's spine, you know, vascular, peripheral nerve, tumors, um, pediatrics, you know, whichever field you want to go into, you're going to also have the opportunity to kind of, you know, specialize into that um, while you get a complete experience. At the same time, you're starting a job search um, and you got to figure out where you want. And I think that decision should probably be made a little bit earlier. Um, I think that, um, you know, during your sixth year, if you decide you want to specialize in a certain field and you want to do academics, for example, you should be sending out letters probably towards the end of your sixth year or, you know, mid to end of your sixth year, just, you know, um, inquiring about jobs or you know, at the latest, at the beginning of your chief year. Um, and um, it's, I think it goes both for academics and for um, you know, private practice uh, in terms of, of planning. So, um, you know, in the middle of my uh, sixth year, I, I knew I had done research by that time uh, and um, wanted to specialize in tumors. So at that point, um, kind of towards the spring, before the spring meeting, which is usually the double ANS or uh, meeting, um, I uh, prepared a, a short letter and I sent it to, you know, the, the programs across the country that, um, uh, you know, I thought would be um, a place that I wanted to work at and um, sent, sent letters of inquiry. And then, you know, I did it up, up, um, deliberately because I, I knew that at the AANS meeting, I could set, uh, it would be easy for chairmen's and program directors to meet with me. And so then I would meet with um, certain people uh, at, at the meetings, and then that usually turned into interviews throughout my chief year, and then um, ultimately you'll get your job offers and choose the position you want. So throughout yeah. your career, did you ever consider going private practice, or were you academic-focused all the way? Yeah, sure. I mean, of course you've considered that. I think when you enter into residency, you should be open and um, pick what you want to do. Um, you know, for me, I, I really enjoyed um, my laboratory efforts as well as the clinical af uh, efforts. And um, I knew that the, uh, I wanted to do research and be in a lab. So to me, I, um, you know, I pretty quickly came upon the, the, the decision to go into academics. 
but um, yeah, I mean, I think you should be open and think about all options. You know, I think when you go to residency, it's in a, you know, up to residency, you're in this part of your life where you focus on school, 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 but something called life happens in, in residency for most people, you know, some people um, decide to get married, some people may have family, some people don't, but um, you, ha you come to some uh, decisions in your life and it's not always about studying. And, um, you know, you weigh um, the, the priorities uh, of what you want to do and, and come to decisions on, you know, the type of field you want to do and, and um, as well as private practice or academic practices. What would you say were some of the keys of your success that shaped your early career as you climbed the ranks in academics? You know, I, I think the key to um, early success is to have passion in what you're doing. So, you know, when you go through residency, you should pick something that you really enjoy doing. And I think if you enjoy doing it, then things will come. Um, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to be a physician scientist and um, I loved, um, I love being in the operating room, uh, but I also love the science to it. And so um, I wanted to be, um, once I figured out my passion, you wanna figure out where you wanna be, right? And so uh, I, you know, the people I mentor, I say, sometimes when you're coming to choose a job, you either have to choose location or choose what you wanna do. And sometimes if you're lucky, you get both. But uh, a lot of times um, you might have to make that decision. And so, if you um, have a certain thing that you want to do and you want to be passionate about it, you know, they're realistically probably not every state or not every city in the country has the tools to accomplish what you want. And so you have to be flexible about location. Um, but if location is very important, then you have to be flexible about the specialty you want to choose, for example. On that so. thought, what advice do you have for the graduating chief residents and fellows entering the professional job market for the first time? You know, I, I think when you um, enter into the um, job market for the first time, I think it's important to have um, people that you can turn to for questions and mentorship. Um, you know, as you are in chief residency, you have lots of mentors in your um, program, and I would uh, recommend that you, you know, approach them to, to get advice. Um, I think um, it, Oftentimes neurosurgery is a small field and people have a lot of insight about, you know, places and programs. And I, I think it's important to remember that you're not trying to just um, uh, get into their program or their, um, you know, practices, but you have to also remember that you are now going to be entering into a, you know, a partnership. And so you want to make sure that you are um, going to a place that's going to fit well for you. Remember, this is going to be a two-way street, so it's important to get as much information um, uh, about each place. Now, with the world being basically virtual in almost every aspect and a lot of these national conferences being done online, what advice do you have for the graduating class regarding their network outreaching process when they would really be able to meet you guys in person and now they don't have that ability to do that right now? You know, um, in some ways it makes it easier in some ways it makes it diff more difficult i think in terms of easy you know a, a zoom call is much easier to make nowadays um we don't have you don't have to fly out on an airplane you don't have to um you know take time off from work uh, for more than half an hour to an hour and so um in some ways i think that you know as you send an email out or a letter asking for um, about job opportunities if if you know that place that you send the letter to has interest, then it'll be pretty easy to schedule a Zoom call and you'll probably have a series of Zoom calls. Now, I think what's tough about the, the, the tough part about Zoom calls is I think that meeting someone one-to-one on, one 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 or you know, um, going to dinner with uh, individuals so that you can kind of get to learn about the personality of the person you're gonna work for or the people that you're gonna work with, um, as well as the, the residents, you, it's, it's harder to get from a Zoom call than, um, than from you know, a personal interaction. So, um, but I, I think in some ways, Zoom calls have probably made um, it getting interviews or at least talking to a program easier. So 
um, I think that, you know, probably the obstacle is a little bit lower in terms of getting there. But on the other hand, um, you have to also realize that you, you probably will be competing with more than, with more people than, than usual for that same position. So, you know, as you uh, look into a job, I think you have to do due diligence. You have to get to know the program. You have to do your homework before talking with folks. Um, it sh you should have always done that, but I think uh, even now it's, it's more important. So there's some questions for residents regarding their productivity in the research years. What is your advice on the opinion on what that brings to the table? So um, I think that's a great question. And so, you know, having been on both sides, obviously, um, you know, from my standpoint, as we've looked at, you know, we've hired many faculty. Um, I think that it's important to show that you can accomplish and, and finish something. Um, to me, I think that's a, a bigger um, uh, indicator of success rather than saying, I'm going to, you know, do all this genetic sequencing and I'm going to bring, or I'm, well, yeah, I mean, let's say I'm going to do, um, yeah, I'm going to do this, some genetic sequencing. I'm going to bring all this with me. Um, I think that's great and that's a, that's a bonus. But um, to me, I think if you have shown that you can, you know, work in an uh, institution, be able to take advantage of the resources around you and, and uh, build a team, to me, that's a bigger indicator of success. And that, that um, is more important to me than the actual um, project because science changes very quickly. And within two to three years, more than likely, you'll be on to something different. Um, you also know that you know each of the institutions, each we all have our strengths and, and weaknesses. And um, if I can see that you can work well with um, others and, and work in a team, then I feel confident that you could come and take the resources that we have and, and do well. So um, I always encourage uh, the people I mentor, you, it's, it's more important about showing that you can work in a team um, and that you can finish something um, rather than um, having to you know, bring something with you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Interview with the Surgeon. Until next time, stay focused and keep following your dreams.